It was over two decades ago that I met Dr. Suttles and his young bride, Mrs. Suttles, Lynette. Dr. and Mrs. Suttles treated me always like I was their daughter. I tried so hard to get on with the district attorney's office. Oh, I tried so hard. And then wouldn't you know, Dr. Suttles was a friend of Mr. Slayton's. He made one phone call and I suddenly got an interview. And I gotta tell you, I know a lot of you have heard I never lost a case, knock on wood. I don't wanna let Dr. Suttles down after he helped me get that job. Bill and Lynette did a lot of the courting right there in the last booth uh, there. And they were there, I believe, three times a day uh, during that courting period. But they were very, very dedicated to the Dwarf Grill, as we called it originally. And uh, I came acquainted with them, him dealing with people there. Uh, also, I uh, remember the uh, the good rapport that he had with the students. I think he knew all the students uh, at school there. But uh, he was the kind of fellow that if you had a problem, he'd, you'd be the first, he'd be the first one I'd go to if they had a problem in any manner. Bill and Lyn Lynette Suttles are cut from the same cloth. Uh, if you know Lynette Suttles, you also know Bill Suttles, and it worked in the other direction as well. I don't know that I've ever seen a couple so united in purpose, in faith, and in kindness. Students at Atlanta Christian College, which is becoming Point University this summer, have access to the HOPE Scholarship. Uh, that was not something uh, that was available in the earliest years, and we had to work hard. Bill Suttles was a uh, key person in making that possible. Bill was the epitome of Southern gentlemen. He was warm, compassionate, genuine, interested, concerned, loving, caring, and was an important influence in my life, especially at a critical moment when I was considering vocational alternatives for myself. And the fact that he married uh, his vocation and calling as a minister with also a call as an educator was very helpful to me in realizing that that was an opportunity I had for my own future. Lynette uh, was the perfect helpmate to Bill. Always by his side, always encouraging and supporting. Uh, a word that comes to me is indefatigable in that uh, no challenge is too great. Uh, she uh, continues to have a very positive, loving spirit uh, no matter what the health challenges might be, no matter whether a tree falls on her house, she uh, continues to go and go and serve the Lord in the process. I've learned so many things from them. First of all, their genuineness, their love for the Lord, their servantship to everyone that they come in contact with. They are a blessing. Faithfulness is a good word for Dr. Bill. He was a very faithful servant to his calling. First of all, being at the little country church he was at for 49 years. That you couldn't be more faithful than that. And he did it out of love. He said Georgia State was his livelihood, but his calling was to preach at the little country churches. I remember seeing him just before he died, sitting by his bed with Mrs. Suttles. And oh, how she loved him and took care of him. I only pray my marriage is as wonderful as theirs was and is. And tonight, congratulations, Mrs. Suttles. You are loved so very much. And oh yes, one other memory that David and I still talk about, I remember one night after work, I dragged into Mary Max restaurant and ordered turnips and cornbread. And David met me after work. 
and we were sitting there all beat down and tired, and in walked the king and queen, Dr. Suttles in a black tux and a white shirt. And Mrs. Suttles, I can remember it right now, in a black sparkly dress and her hair up. They were so beautiful, they didn't even look real. And that, when the angels asked me in heaven, what do I remember? That is a night I will remember. Congratulations, Miss Suttles. I love you. I want to thank the board of directors at the Southwest Christian Care for selecting Bill and me to be the recipient of the Servants Award for 2011. It is such an honor, and we accept it not for ourselves, but for the ministers, for the executives, for the patients, for all of those who love the work that's done at the hospice. Bill and I were familiar with the hospice for many, many years. We visited there to visit the members of our church and our friends and sometimes people we did not even know. We saw there a compassion and a love and efficiency in their work that was unbelievable. Never did we dream that my Bill would come there as a patient, but he had a terrible fall and I was told that he could not survive and we were accepted at the hospice. Bill had not spoken for many days, but when they laid him on his bed, he said, home. He felt that he had gotten home. Thank you from my heart for all the love you showed him and me when we were patients there. I taught school at Marion Smith School one day I had forgotten some materials I needed, and I called him. He said, sure, I'll bring them by. When he came to the door, I said, boys and girls, this is my beloved husband. You could have heard a pin drop. And one little boy said, Miss Suttles, you didn't tell us you married a giant. He was six feet, six inches tall. Fifty-three years later, at the graveside of my beloved Bill, I felt some strong arms embrace me. I felt the touch of love that he had for me. And it was the same little boy who had grown to a man. But he said, Miss Suttles, truly, you did marry a giant, a giant for our Lord Jesus Christ. To God be the glory forever and ever. Amen.